Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Brewers Virtual Happy Hour. I'm Brian Anderson from the BA Lounge, as I like to call it, in my basement, this little sound room in my basement. And uh, it's great to have you with us. We got a packed house. Um, it's awesome that we get to do this again. Our first one was a huge success, so we decided to do another one. Thanks to our friends at Molson Coors and our presenting sponsor, Miller Lite for making it all possible. We got a great show for you. We're excited to unveil our guest and get into some friendly banter. This is uh, the disclaimer I'll give you is that this is just kind of a chill bar stool situation here. We'll ask some questions. We're definitely gonna get to some fan questions, um, but you know, we're not really exactly trying to figure out the day the season's gonna start or anything like that. Cause we don't know any of those answers. So uh, let's, start bringing in our panelists right here and we're excited to uh, get them engaged uh, we have a bunch of guests that are going to be coming on throughout the show but we will start with the leader el capitan ladies and gentlemen the manager of the milwaukee brewers whitefish bay native wisconsin zone craig council craig are you there i'm oh, here he... what's happening you made it in Wow, Glad to that's be always here. nervous for me to introduce them just because I'm not, you know, you never know, but you're <laughs> techn technology savvy and I appreciate that. How you been, man? How, how's the quarantine in the council household? I heard a little nervousness in your voice there. I don't hear that Can often. Can you hear me correct? Right there, I did, oh. I did. Oh. No, we're doing great. <laughs> yeah, we're doing We're doing. <laughs> We're doing good and um, having fun, making the best of everything. It's awesome. Now, I, I, I think we have a little Zoom delay here. By the way, it's a Zoom webinar. So you may have those awkward moments, and that's part of it. But um, give us an idea of how you're keeping things somewhat organized as manager of the Brewers right now, if and when we come back and play baseball this year. Yeah, I mean, I think for a while it was, um, you know, we were, we were kind of, we were doing some Zoom calls. The pitching coach is doing calls with some of the pitchers. Now, this this week, I probably started to call guys a little bit more, and, and hopefully there's a little bit of news. But, um, you know, hopefully as we get closer and, and things progress a little bit, we can deliver a little bit of good news to the players every day. All right. Well, glad you're there. We're going to introduce – our second panelist, and you're very familiar with this person, Craig. You were former teammates with this individual. He is now a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame, former Brewer for a minute, but achieved one of the great milestones in baseball history, got his 600th save as a Milwaukee Brewer. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Diego, California, let's welcome in the Hall of Famer, Trevor Hoffman. Trevor. Oh. Yeah, nice to see you. Counts, nice to see you too. There you nice Wow. You. you look like you're in playing shape, Trevor. Ready to roll right now. You've been running on the beaches? That's part of the problem with uh, a 10-year layoff from the last time you played is you actually start to think you can redo what, what you did before. And so uh, it uh, it's not happening. Hoffie's not coming back. <laughs> Give us a sense of what Trevor Hoffman has done from the last time Brewers fans saw you on the mound at Miller Park. You finished your career. You go into the Hall of Fame. What have you been doing? What do you do now for a living, Trevor, aside just being Trevor Hoffman, the most interesting man in the world? Yeah, B.A., I, uh, I was lucky enough to be home um, right when my kids started high school, and so – it was fun to see their four years um, from a dad's perspective that I hadn't really had the opportunity to do that with. Um, got to go to a lot of sports games, got to go to a lot of practices. Uh, and then it's to-do list that mama had, this thing that you're supposed to take care of around the house was really long. And so I had to figure out how to get that done because I couldn't certainly do it. So I had to find someone that could take care of that list. <laughs> I just watched your Hall of Fame speech again last night. Man, that just brought such good memories. You killed that speech. And the fact that you kind of 
gave Milwaukee a little piece of that speech. It, it meant a lot to us here in Milwaukee, Brewers fans all over the country. It was a beautiful thing to relive, Trevor. It's awesome to see you again. Thanks, B.A. It was uh, a, a great two years. It was very quick, like you said. Um, a short window in Milwaukee, but loved every minute of it. The fans were fantastic. The ownership. Mr. A was great to me. Um, getting to be around Uke on a daily basis, coaching staff. I mean, heck, it was, it was, it was a great, great spot for Trevor Hoffman. Awesome. Craig Council, Trevor Hoffman there. And let's go to our next panelist, all-star closer of the Brewers, who is coming back from Tommy John surgery and is, I think, ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, from Leander, Texas, which is in central Texas, the folks we call the Cedar Choppers, Corey Knabel in the house. Hello, Corey. Are you there, pal? Hey, guys. I'm here. I see him. It's a pleasure to be on here, B.A. <laughs> Well, you win the visual so far. You got the great hat, Corey. Well done. <laughs> and I would say that you wore the hat for a bit, but honestly, you probably had that hat on from the second you woke up this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's been on a good amount of the day. It's uh it's uh it's ninety degrees here in Texas, so trying to keep the sun off, you know, keep the shade in and everything's going good. Have you been throwing? I know you're coming back from surgery. Do you think if the season was to start at some point that you'd be ready? How do you feel? Yeah, um, been throwing every day. So we're, uh, we're able to get that going still. Um, weather's been nice here in Texas. So we've got everything we need. My workout partner built us a mound. Um, so we, uh, we're set on that. <clears throat> we got a nine square net we've been throwing into. Got some hitters coming in faces. So Everything's been going good. Just you know, waiting for that day to come. That's all we can do right now. Uh, that's awesome to see you, man. Corey and I, we're from the same hometown, went to the same high school. He went to high school much later. He was actually born long after I graduated. Georgetown, Texas, <laughs> shout out to Georgetown. All right, so these are our, our brewers, former brewers, current brewers that are ready. And then we have a special guest. Now, later in the show, Charlie Barons is coming on. Hilarious comedian. Uh, the Manitowoc Minute, you might recognize Charlie. But right now, very special guest, the man who was the king of sports movies in the 90s and some of my favorite movies ever, famed director Ron Shelton coming to us from Los Angeles, California. Ron, are you out there, my friend? I'm just happy to be here. Hope I can help There he is. Up. <laughs> already got his lines down yes ron has directed so many great movies white man can't jump Cobb, some of my favorites 10 cup but we're here with ron specifically to honor him and his masterpiece bull durham and what better way to go into a baseball virtual chat with the, with the guy who wrote and directed bull durham ron it's been over 30 years but that movie still resonates to this day i watched it last night it uh, re-airs all the time. What an historic piece of art that you created. It's so good to have you join us here. Well, thank you. And it's, uh, I'm delighted that it's lasted. I was just trying to stay on schedule and not get fired, you know? Um, you know, <laughs> it's sort of like a, a baseball season. It's, uh, it's long, you just show up day to day and do what you gotta do and hope you're there tomorrow to do it again. So uh, there's not a lot glamorous about it, but um, I think having played professional baseball, it sort of prepares you for the ups and downs of movie making and movie career. It's the same sort of thing. Uh, you got to be prepared. You can't get too up and you can't get too down. I've been both, you know. Well, I know you've tapped into uh, the Craig Council life. You've actually coached and, you know, managed some teams, amateur league teams, your son. Um, give us an idea what the life of Ron Shelton has been like. You know, I know you're still writing and creating, but what is life for you like during this pandemic? And what's been going on in your world recently, Ron? Well, my, I only coached for a few years until they said I had too much Earl Weaver in me because I played with the Oriole organization. <laughs> so they wouldn't let me near a little league game. But uh, <laughs> my son plays baseball in high school and he's, you know, lost his sophomore year like everybody. And uh, 
if you wanted me to ask Craig Council, because we were watching uh, uh, on uh, an old game last night, how you hold the bat so high, Craig, and get hit. <laughs> 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 I'm sure Ron, I'm asking this for Tell him not to do that, Ron. The best violin <laughs> son is never consider doing that. <laughs> That's you know, that'll be you'll, you'll be father of the year if you tell him not to do it. All right. <laughs> I remember there was you one know, off you know season. what? Here's here's the thing. It's it was we don't want to worry about the mechanics. You want to know what the gene that counts had? Clutch. Clutch, no doubt. Yeah. Two-time World Series champion. I remember one year, remember counts, uh, I threw batting practice to you, and you were kind of going through these changes, and man, just to watch you, like, before you throw the pitch, thinking, there's no way he's going to be able to actually hit the ball that way, and then to throw it, and then to see the results. I mean, you're kind of remembered for that. You've done a lot of things in your life, but everybody has that batting stance. Uh, in mind and I don't see anybody actually trying to replicate that so you're a one of a kind you're like a, a fingerprint there counts you know it's funny you know it you know the, the my, my career was pretty you know average but the batting stance is what makes people remember you and so I you know that wasn't the plan ever but it's all you know the things you're not planned on is the things you don't think you're going to be remembered for is what you're remembered for um I'll take it it was it was uh something a little different it worked and uh, it worked for a while, at least. It looked ridiculous now that I look back on it. Um, <laughs> but it, it, here we are, right? <laughs> and you were the shortstop for Trevor's famous 600 save. Trevor, by the way, I'd like to go on a quick little scavenger hunt of what you have behind you. There's some pretty cool... Whoever set the vibe in the Trevor Hoffman Lounge deserves a lot of praise right here you got some pretty cool stuff there including the 600 marker which was the first player ever to save 600 games uh in a major league career that's awesome back there trev thank you very Eight much i appreciate it <laughs> you know i cheated a little bit because i saw last week's episode with with robin and um i enjoyed the way he walked around and grabbed a bunch of stuff so i figured i'd condense my walk around and, and just have it behind me but yeah the, the 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 painting that the, the brewers gave me uh on that night uh a nice big bottle of wine from beverly hills sports council uh, all-star game in milwaukee here my favorite bobbleheads with eddie cedar in the middle um <laughs> prince doing the bomb and i just looked at it now and counts yours is the only jersey that we can see with your name and number as well as prince which is fantastic um some old old caps and uh, the number four hole at Torrey that I like to play every now and again. Wow. Well, now Robin had his Hall of Fame plaque. His version of it is literally like a coaster. Where is yours? What do you, where do you put your version of it? Not Obviously not the one that's in Cooperstown, but the one they give you. Where's that displayed? Yeah, that's in, that's in an office. Um, we're in the middle of kind of moving in to a new place. And so some of those things are in boxes. I, I wanted to kind of put out more Milwaukee generated stuff, but uh, yeah, like he, like he held it up. It's, it was way smaller and way lighter than the one, the real one that goes up on the wall in the rotunda. <laughs> uh, so cool, man. Pretty good for a, for a failed shortstop in the minor leagues to be a hall of fame pitcher, right? Man, what a career, what a career. Thank you. And Ron played some pro ball as well. One thing before we get going, uh, I want the fans to be able to interact a little bit. So I'd like to, uh, we have a poll question. We have two poll questions. And while we have Ron, uh, this one is a Bull Durham related poll question. You guys feel free to chip in. So our first poll question and fans, you can chime in here. We'd love to, to get your a, thoughts uh... and see if you like this. But number one, favorite character from Bull Durham is the question. Are we going with Crash Davis? Are we going with Annie? Are we going with Nuke Lelouch, Skip Riggins, or the pitching coach, Larry Hockett? So those are the the questions for you and we'd love to hear what you have to say and you know Ron we were talking to Corey Knable earlier Corey wasn't even born when this movie came out and yet he knows all the lines to the movie I mean Corey when did you first see Bull Durham and what give us the uh, the timeline of how many times you've actually watched this movie um in all honesty it's probably been five times uh first time I saw it was actually my junior year in high school 2009 so 
Um, you know, I'm assuming that's a little, little, little dated, a little past when that movie actually came out. So, um, yeah, that was the first time I ever saw it. Loved it. So, <clears throat> well, one, one thing we'd like to do while we have Ron, who's a, so here's the thing, Corey Knables, you've been an all-star council as is a two-time world series champion trevor hoffman's in the hall of fame and trevor has taught me the change up and showed me how he's throwing it councils showed me his batting stance Corey, you and i have talked about your pitching often i've never actually been directed by a real life famous academy award nominated director and since we have ron ron unless you're got something else planned uh, i was thinking maybe we would act out a scene just do a table read and you could direct us if that's okay by you I'm, yeah i've got the script right here i'm prepared oh is that the actual <laughs> script is that like the, the, the script oh my god oh, man. You gotta... it's like holding the mo the mona lisa of sports movies right there all right so let me um i think i'll start it i'll be nuke lelouch but I know, Corey, you're kind of perfect for Nuke Lelouch, but I think I'll, only because he would have one line in this. You remember the famous mound scene? If you guys can track with me a minute, the, where they come to the mound and, you know, they're talking about stuff that doesn't exist in baseball. So I think Trevor would be the good manager because he's Love kind it. of the Thank elder you. statesman. You're welcome. Um, I really like either Corey, you being the pitching coach or Crash Davis. So I, I'm going to let you choose which – which you'd like to be? I'll be the Your pitcher. pitchers. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm surprised. So you're Larry. I'm surprised you gave the the manager to Hoffman and not the manager in the in this Zoom well, call. I just I feel like, and I want to get Ron's opinion, but I feel like what what makes the scene is the pitching coach Larry and Crash, and you two are going to have to make the scene. So, Council, are you okay being Crash Davis in the scene? I'm okay with the pressure you just put on me. Yes, yes, I'll deliver for you. <laughs> so that, that's, the, that's the real answer. That's that's the real answer. <laughs> Two lines for this Ron, dumb guy. Could you perfect smart guy? <laughs> yes. Ron, could you set the scene for us? What kind of character we're supposed to be in? It's the mound scene. It's in the middle of a game. Could you kind of like direct us here? What what is the scene that we're gonna do? Well. <clears throat> Nuke Lelouch is, is finally getting his stuff together and he's having a bad game. And the pitching coach and the manager are discussing what's going on. And um, Larry, the pitching coach, is going to send out to the mound because people keep showing up. Now, having been a middle infielder, I, I was at a lot of mound meetings in which we didn't talk about anything to do with the game. Most of them we were trying to get the pitcher to relax, usually. Or there was a blonde behind the third base dugout back in the day. Or where are we going to drink? <laughs> Miller products only. Miller products only. Um, nice, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to capture the humor of the game and, and uh, that it, it players are also having fun out there. You know, <laughs> at least we used to. Maybe that's why I didn't make the big leagues. But. Uh, so that's all. Where are we going to start in the scene, Brian? Uh, so I, I, I'll start it, and I'll be, I'll be Nuke Lelouch, and we'll do a table read. And if you need to, like, come down on us, Ron, we can take it. We're, we're ready for it. So <clears throat> it's going to be me, and then uh, Trevor, you're the manager. Uh, Corey, you're the pitching coach. And counsel is Crash Davis. So I'll start it. Okay, here we go. There's a meeting at the mound, and I say, I, I'm uh, Nuke Let me get in character. I don't know how to do this, but I don't know how to do so. Excuse me, guys. I got a game to pitch here. What the hell's going well, on Trevor, out there? That's your cue. <laughs> Hang on. We're starting over. <laughs> okay. God, God, I like the job, by the way. God. Yes, I didn't know. That's my, my fault. I didn't know you were going with the chewing tobacco. That is perfect. Thank you for fully investing in this my bad is everybody ready now <laughs> thumbs up yeah by the way we shot this between midnight and 6 a.m so we were a little looser by then yeah <laughs> oh that right? reminds me 
I've, I, I violated the code. Ron, you're the director. You should say action and cut. I'll wait on your cue. My fault. That's my fault. I can fire you, B.A. Don't, don't forget yes. that. <laughs> All right. We're going on your cue, Ron. Everybody's ready. Okay. Ron is going to get sound, us going here. I'm speed, ready. Camera. Are we ready? Do we have sound? Do we have speed? And action. Excuse me, guys. I got a game to pick. Oh, the, daughter, the, oh, the daughter came out. That was legend. Daughter's yeah, out. Legend came out. Legend, be quiet. I can't Le control the Le Cor Cor Corey's she daughter, went, Ledger. She went poop. Yay. <laughs> hey, you is that a in the scene? On the mound. <laughs> uh, let's try one more time. Okay, everybody. And action. Excuse me, guys. I got a game to pitch here. What the hell's going on out there? <laughs> Looks like a convention. Pretty soon they're going to call the roll. <laughs> Get your ass okay. out there and check it out. Excuse me. What the heck is going on out here? Well, Nuke's scared because his eyelids are jammed and his old man's here. We need a live roost. We need a live rooster to take the curse off Jose's glove, and nobody seems to know what to get Millie or Jimmy for the wedding present. Is that about right? Okay. Well, uh, candlesticks make a nice gift, and uh, maybe find out where she's registered, and maybe a place setting or a nice silverware or canister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get two. Here we go. Cut, print, brilliant. <laughs> That's not. We did it. Oh, Corey, Corey, Cable, brilliant. Yeah. What the? Ron, could you go ahead and uh, take Ron? Can you post game this now and tell us uh, how many takes did that take, Corey? Yes, and then assess our uh, our our performance there, please. Well, we didn't have two and a half year goals running around with their diapers full while we were shooting it. So, Corey, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Uh, look, a, a scene like that is fun. And, and the trick is when you're directing the real actors is to have them play it sit straight and not try to get laughs because it's funnier because they're playing it serious. You know what I mean? And if you played it jokey, it wouldn't work. But everybody's got a job to do. Do the job and the scene will be funny. And you know, the, the producers wanted me to cut the scene out because they were behind, were behind schedule. And I said, that scene's why I made the movie. That scene is what the movie's about. The lunacy, the absurdity, how much fun the game can be and what's going on that the fan has no idea about. Hey, Corey, what's the strangest mound conversation you've ever had? And I'd love to hear this from Counts and Trevor too, but we'll start with Corey. What's the weirdest, mound conversation you've had in a big league game or a minor league game um you know none of the visits when council comes out none of the visits are, are usually you know anything uh um fun it's usually something you know uh let's go over situation or hey <laughs> you're out of here dude so um <laughs> the the best one i had you know crap would come out Kratz always liked to keep it loose out there. He never liked to keep it serious. Um, same thing with uh, when we had Stephen Vogt too, but Kratz was one where he'd, uh, man, he would, he would do whatever he had to do to think about anything else. So um, I can't give you exactly what he would tell me, but um, one, he would, he had talked about, uh, hey, you see that, you see that fan over there behind third base? Yeah, well, he made a pretty good play on that last foul ball. So, um, you know, let's let's try and keep him out of play this time. And that was it. You know, just something something as simple as ma make me look over at third base and just forget about it. And all right, he's back to home plate now. So um, that was just the strangest one I've had. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I'm uh, usually when people are coming out to talk to me anyway, it's like, hey, let's go clean it up, dude. <laughs> get out of this <laughs> hurry up how about you so. how about you trevor yeah kind of saw, along those lines if they're coming out to talk to you it's probably not a very good situation to be in but uh <laughs> from what i understand counts has a saying when he comes out it's like what's the situation sir 
and uh, <laughs> guys better know what's going on so that they uh, can figure this thing out. But uh, yeah, I think that the main idea is that the pitching coach takes your mind off of the obscurity and the, the, the pressure of the situation. And I, I know Darren Balsley's come out and said, hey, your shoes are untied or you know what? You didn't pull up your zipper after you went to the bathroom, <laughs> that sort of thing. And that fat, that, sh that shock factor works because it's like, oh, I'm just kidding. You got to go face Mike Piazza. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> you got one counts? I know you've been in a lot of mound meetings in your life. Yeah. The, so the, the funny thing, so what Trevor's referring to is the, the guy I always loved was, was Jared Hughes when I, you know, so I'd take the starting That's pitcher true. ever. And Jared Hughes would come sprinting in from the bullpen, you know, like full speed sprinting in. And, it, and he'd get to the mound and he'd be completely out of breath. And he, in this really deep voice, he'd go, what's the situation, sir? <laughs> and it, it, <laughs> it was the funniest thing. The first time he did it, I couldn't stop. I could not laugh. I was laughing. I was like, is this guy serious? <laughs> Um, it, it was just great. So he and he would end it, but he did it every time he ran into the and ran into the game. He asked the same question, so I'd I'd give him the answer real serious because he was staring me down like like the world was <laughs> question for him. So I'd give him an answer. But now in spring training, whenever we get a new pitcher, that when they come running in the mound in the first game, and it's really you know it's we're taking it easy in spring training. I always drop it on him. What's the situation, sir? And the pitcher looks at me like his eyes are wide open. <laughs> <laughs> awesome and ron you 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 had a minor league ball before we let you go you played i mean you lived the bull durham life that was your experience so uh obviously this is a compilation of things but when you think back to your playing days what are what are some of the memories that you have i think a lot of them ended up in the movie bull durham but uh what are some memories that you have about some of those odd moments that didn't involve between the lines oh. I remember I should have laid off that low and away slider a lot more than I did. Uh, you know. <laughs> um, years later, Eric Davis, the great outfielder, he said, why'd you quit? I said, I couldn't lay off that slider. And he said, when he was a rookie, he wanted to meet Pop Stargell and they're playing Pittsburgh. And before the game, he introduced himself and Davis was a great young player. And he said, Mr. Stargell, I have a question. How do you hit the slider? And he says, Sonia, don't miss the fastball. I, <laughs> That's good. I thought that was the best hitting advice. I wish somebody had told me that. I, I want to <laughs> say that I met Goose Gossage years after Bull Durham came out. And there's a picture of Thurman Munson in the movie. And I love Munson. And I said, tell me about Munson. And he said, and, he, and Goose was talking about this scene you all just did. He said, Munson would come out to the mound and in ways you can't say on a family show, say, you're the worst pitcher I've ever seen. Number one, I thought you were top 10. I've caught you three times in the pen this year for the Yankees, you're the worst. You called out a fastball. He was, he was, I'm embarrassed. I'm not even going out to dinner with you after. He was always like that. And he said, and, and Goose said, I always threw better when he went back to the plate because I knew he was all over me. I knew he wasn't serious, but I also knew I was in my head too much. And Munson got you out of your head so fast, you'd say, get back behind there, I'll throw better, you know? So uh, in a certain way, Thurman sort of reinforces what we're trying to do here. No question, man. Well, uh, before Ron goes, I want to put up the, the poll question again. And just to show you the results, all the fans have been, we got a ton of questions coming in too, but it looks like uh, the favorite character is Crash Davis. I'm sure that is no surprise for you, Ron. Mm -hmm. Coming in a close second would be uh, Ebby Lelouch. Ron, cheers to you, my friend. It is awesome to see you. Thank you for your brilliance. The fact that you would come in and spend a little time with our fans means a lot to us. We love you, man. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate you being here. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet all of you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Ron. If you could hear the applause pleasure. as he leaves the meeting, you, you would be able to hear it. Uh, Trevor, when when Counts was talking about um, Jared running in, it reminded me of the Todd Coffee story. 
and I'm going to try to jog your memory without giving everything, but Todd was the first guy I ever saw sprint in from the bullpen like that. And you totally mentored Todd Coffey, but he was on the disabled list <laughs> during this one <laughs> window of time. <laughs> and I'm going to let you take it from there, but you had the Hoffman Olympics that all the relievers worked out before the games. Can you please explain and describe the scene as you're running down toward Potawatomi with Todd Coffey unable to run? Yeah, uh, Roger Kaplinger tried his best to get that knee a little uncranky uh, for, so Todd could participate in some of the activities that we were doing. But uh, you know, like you said, he had no problem running out in the seventh and eighth inning as fast as he could. So we didn't <laughs> want to push his exercise. I think we lost Trevor. I don't hear Trevor. Yeah, I don't have lost him. Oh, and he's right in the middle of his story. Can you hear me, Trevor? Can you yeah. still hear us? Try again, Trev. Yeah, we lost his mic. Shoot. Bummer. Council, by the way, while we're trying to get Trevor back, did you just change your background? I did. I did, Trevor. <laughs> Is that you <laughs> on a lawnmower? That's me. That's Trevor's lawnmower. I'm going to move to the side here. That's the lawnmower that Trevor gave me. And so I sent him a picture of a gift in full uniform mowing the lawn. And it's a uh, gift I, I've shared with him. I send it to him every fall as I'm mowing the lawn. The double ear flaps <laughs> make it work. Huh? Try again, Trevor. I want to see if we can hear you. All right, I, I'm back to hearing you guys. I, oh, I yes, we, we hear you now. I'm with you guys. I apologize. Finish the Todd Coffee story first. I love this. So I don't know where I might have left off with you guys, but uh, we wanted to make sure we didn't beat on Todd too early in the afternoon. So while the rest of the relievers were running, we put a stationary bike on the top of a golf cart flatbed that Clubby Nation with you know, Jason Shogger set up, to Tony Migliacci, they took care of the whole business. And as we were running, we had made Todd ride on the back of the golf cart on a stationary bike uh, and saying hello to everybody that was tailgating. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm driving into the ballpark, and I see all the relievers running, and I see Todd strapped to the back of the flatbed on a treadmill. God, that was funny. That is essential, Trevor Hoffman. That was so good, man. You guys, so I didn't, Trevor, you didn't comment because you were <laughs> you muted for some reason. What's the story with the lawnmower that council's got back there? People like me muted, BA, that's for sure. But uh, <laughs> I, I figured we were talking about the lawnmower a little bit, but we had an off day and uh, we got to go down and support Marcus Handel's uh, uh, charity event uh, down in Racine, beautiful event with a lot of the guys' participation and I kind of stuffed the ballot box, if you might want to say, with a bunch of raffle tickets purchased uh, for that butte of a lawnmower. And lo and behold, I won it. And it was going to be a long drive back to California with a small lawn way to me. Uh, so I figured Mr. Milwaukee deserved it more than anybody because he does his own lawn. And as you can see with that wonderful picture, he, <laughs> he, he did it to the hilt, full uni with a Miller light next to him and double flat. Uh, nobody better. And he's, he's, I can guarantee he's still using it today. Is that true, Counts? You still have that lawnmower? I still use it for sure, for sure. I love it's my favorite picture you that got... I, I'd share with Trev. Um, I could, you know, you feel like you feel, hey, Trevor, I don't want to tell anybody, but I, you know, I love this lawnmower so much that I'll put full uni on and go out and mow the lawn for my neighbors because it's just, it's a, it's a great <laughs> gift. It's a gift that keeps on giving. And that was that was great. Oh, that hey, was let me rip a fire. Day. But then it becomes the manager. <laughs> I'm like yeah, the manager the no. with the double off. flap. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, feeling a little vulnerable. Now. Wait, I, I have to save this bit. to the world. I'll be honest. You, you are. You are vulnerable. This needs to be put on pause for Charlie Barron's in a moment. I'm going to introduce him real quick. I got a, some fan questions are coming in hot. Let's go rapid fire here. Uh, <laughs> Trevor, your favorite Brewers memory. That's from uh, AJ. Um, your favorite Brewers memory, Trevor Hoffman. To, uh, be carried. 
Thank you, AJ, for asking. Um, you know, not, not very many people get the opportunity to be carried off of a field, but uh, my teammates, um, upon 600 being executed with a nice ground ball to Mr. Council, um, chose to pick up a very large, um, unassuming Trevor Hoffman that would weigh a little more than they expected and uh, be able to be carried off was, was, was pretty special. You know, it's one of my favorite pictures, Scott Polisic. It's awesome. Uh, Laura H. is asking you, Corey, uh, not, not coming in as uh, reverential with Trevor Hoffman as she is with you. She wants to know, are you hiding your quarantine hair? And she wants to see what's under the lid. Oh, no. I buzzed it. I got tired <laughs> of it. There's no hair. <laughs> yeah. is, that a, is that a home haircut? <laughs> yeah, that was my own, my own clippers. I had to buzz it, so that's why I wear this. That's this thing is gonna burn man so i wear this all day every day <laughs> serious question for you counts from eric w wants to know like uh about the rule changes what potential rule change uh he says do you think about most when you can't fall asleep especially your thoughts on the dh yeah i, I mean i don't i think um just the number of players we're going to have is probably the, the big thing for me. Uh, Cause the, you know, the way I always see it is that, you know, you add another player, let's like a player that can help us win a game and do something good for us. So, and then figure out how like we can use all these guys to the best of their skills that, that help can help us win games. So um, more about like kind of the number of players we're going to get to have on the team, because I think, um, you know, I think we've had some success in September using, you know, a bunch of players and, and a whole at what the best at to help us win games. Awesome. Thank you guys for your questions. Appreciate that. I know these guys have uh, seen these questions as well. I'd like to kind of circle back to the lawnmower situation, and I really would like to introduce our next guest the very funny comedian from right here in the great state of wisconsin charlie barons is out there in virtual zoom land charlie are you there can you come in come on in i see it i see the potential hi oh, there can he you is. hear me hi charlie does it work works good hey there we, how you doing we can hear you can you hear us it's an honor to be here <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'd like before because yes. I really want to. There is delay. I want you to make up a, a a beer float for us, but wait. Before we go, that I I kind of want to hear the Manitowoc minute on the council. Could you move off screen a little bit so he can get a visual of that background? Could you, the Manitowoc <laughs> minute give us an idea of what we're looking at with the manager of the Brewers on top of a lawnmower? Hey there, folks. How you doing? Uh, welcome to uh, Demand Walk Minute special rep on the Craig Council on top of a, I can't tell if it's a simplicity. Oh, no, the internet connection is unstable. Oh, my gosh. We had an emergency there. Anyway, he appears to be on a lawnmower. I, I'm, I'm not sure about his cutting methods. I'm thinking... Is he one of the guys who, who gets the rollers on the thing, the nice baseball diamond lines on his lawn? Or is he someone who says, uh, to heck with it, just have, you know, someone come over with a weed whacker and make it look just okay or just <laughs> in the Johnson's lawn? Or does he really care and get the rollers out? Is he like, no. just the backyard, no one's going to be looking at that anyway? These are things that can tell you about a man hole is what his lawn looks like. So I'll tell you that right now. And, uh, you know, I, gosh, I'm a guy who lets the uh, dandelions grow on my lawn because I think flower, you know, they really fly, cut them. Plus, I'm too darn cheap to get the uh, fertilizer or pesticides around. But that's me. And, uh, you know, occasionally to make the grass grow a little greener, I do, uh, you know, some uh, sheep's head that I catch in the lawn. And I... Uh, Mr. Council, you may do that as well, okay? So... It's good to see that. Um, yeah, that was just a little bit, you know, I you're like going to want to edit that down before this goes out to the audience tonight. Okay? <laughs> right, right. We, Yeah, we're, we're not live at all. So you can do whatever you want. 
Uh, there aren't a thousand people okay, in ahead. a virtual room <laughs> watching this, Charlie. So, man, it's so <laughs> great to see you. You're so funny, and it's awesome to have you here. Now, part of the I want to. I know you. You asked me if you could ask questions to the guys, and I know you're itching to do that. But before you do that, would you share your beer float with us, Charlie? I know that's kind of your thing, and we could really use a beverage right now. So go ahead. Sure. You know, and I'm glad you asked that. Hey there, folks. Welcome to uh, the Quarantine KK. Uh, and today's episode, we're making a beer float. I know how to make a beer float because I recipe on YouTube once, and I figured I'd try it out. First things first, get some ice cream. This is Sea Cow Creamery. Oh my gosh, and it's been melting because it's been sitting here the whole gosh darn time. Uh, your ice cream scooper. I got a spoon, but make sure you get one of the fat spoons. The little ones will bend, okay? And then scoop, that's one scoop, okay? But your heart's saying, I want two. So you gotta listen to the heart and two scoops of that ice cream. Okie doke, smokes. Folks, I meant to say folks instead of smokes, but you know, I was drinking one of these beers while I was waiting. Got a little loose in the tongue. Anyway, folks, this beer float is presented by Miller Lite. Miller Lite. It's a heck of a lot better than Bush, okay? So you crack that boy, okay? And then pour it on there, okay? Now make sure you, yep. Now, the foam, I, this is an amateur pour, right? I'm nervous, you know? I'm foaming up a little bit more than I need to. Anyway, shoot. Okay, well, got more foam than we anticipated, but that's okay. For time's sake, I'm just going to on there, okay? And now pull out the magic bullet. Yes, the same magic bullet that uh, Grandma Sue bought from the late night infomercials, okay? And then you're, uh, you're gonna do it, but here, this is very important. Oh shoot, my light almost fell down. Now you're, you know, folding it up, do the council form, okay? Craig council, there you go, okay? Just like that, yup. And then you shake her up a little bit, okay? Do you like that, Craig? That was just for you there, guy, okay? And then you pop her open, okay? And, uh, and then you pour in your cup. Okay, don't any gar little... any garnish any garnish at all, I, Charlie? You know, you could do a lot of garnish wise. Some folks like to uh, put a little chocolate syrup on that. Okay, uh, I get hurt if I mix chocolate ice cream and beer, so I'm gonna avoid that. I just I go with the nectar of Bell and the nectar of the Miller myself. But you know, I'm a simple man. Okay, very vanilla, has flavor. Okay. Uh mm huh. -hmm. <coughs> Tastes delicious. And you drink that how is bad it? boy down and you get close. To, oh, it's wonderful. I mean, what do you mean? How is it? Beer and ice cream? You mix them too? Oh, come on. I mean, <laughs> natural elixir. And then when you need more, just put up your tip up, okay? And then your bartender knows that you need more. Uh -huh. Now, that's a Packers one. I don't have a Brewers one yet, but I'm thinking I'll get one uh, after this uh, deal here. So. All right. Now, that's it. Could that's I, it. Could I? Could I tap into 15-year-old uh, Craig Council and in full Manitowoc Minute voice and get a reaction on the beer float, Council? Like, what's uh, what's that like for you? You're a native. Oh, yeah, Dur. I've tried that out many times already. It's, um, you know, not new up in these parts. And, um, you know, we like to have those on uh, Friday nights right after the fish fry there. <laughs> now, now, That's good. If I may... Yeah, that that was wonderful. Now, are you are you a walleye or fry guy? Um, I, I'm a musky guy. I like the musky. Uh, it's musky oh. season weeks ago, so I just got out there on the lake. There, a little bit cold, but um, you know, we got them a couple there, a couple of good fights with the musky. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> Where are you catching them on, if you don't mind me asking? Oh. Me. We'll cut all this yeah. out before it goes <laughs> Sure, on. right. You guys go ahead. We got all kind of time. <laughs> you got a Hall of Famer sitting here right here. Just kick him back. Go ahead. I've it's been awful. too deep now. I got no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, hey, Corey. Corey, maybe we should give him a little uh, hillbilly talk of where we come from, man. I'm kind of imagining we do the whole mound scene from Bull doing over again in our own authentic native voices where I kind of talk like this, man. This is where I grew up speaking like that, man. How how you mother them? Everybody good? You guys good? 
Hey, your mom doing? Yep. Hey, what the hell are you mama doing, doing? Out here now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Trevor's no, he's like a California guy, a, uh, so match here. we got a two on two. Um, Trevor's the arbiter. Trevor, do you have a question, Charlie, for the Hall of Famer, Trevor Hoffman? I know you're dying to have a chat with him. I do. Hey, dear uh, Trevor, how you doing, dear guy? Listen, um, throughout your illustrious career, you spent time in California, Florida, and Wisconsin. Now, which state is the best? And uh, here's a hint, it doesn't add letter A. Um, and why? Well, Charlie, it's, uh, you know, when I'm passing the 405 to get to the 101, to get to the 10, to be able to come out to, you know, Wisconsin, I got my parents next to me in the car, the, the surfboard in the back. And, uh, you know, I just got to love them both, being the guy that likes to mow his lawn and, and hop on a surfboard from time to time. You know, Trevor, Whoa. I, I really appreciate that response. That was, that deserves a golf clap and maybe a little bit more, okay? And hey, you take I that I thought he was diving in again. like a little California dude there, kind of a weave of dialect with the dude and Wisconsin. Like that is quintessential Trevor Hoffman. Like you've experienced both. Well done, Trevor. That was surprising. Thanks, B.A. <laughs> Nice. Well <laughs> done. I love that. Great. Mr. What else Ryan. you got, Charlie? I know you had a list of questions. So yesterday, uh, Charlie came on and we actually cut this promo. And I, I like the question you asked, and I'd love to get it answered here about Corey Knable. And I thought it yeah. was a legitimate question, Charlie. Sure, sure. Uh, <clears throat> Corey, how you doing, guy? Uh, listen, we were wondering why the K in Knable isn't silent, like knife is, you know, uh, knife. It's not knife. Uh, your answer, please. Uh, <laughs> very good point. My dad knew I was going to be a professional baseball player one day, so they uh, changed the name. It was Nabel, but they changed it to make sure that K was in there. We got to have K Nabel. Nice. Nice. I love it. That's perfect. That's, uh, it has a good ring to it. It's good for a broadcaster to say, Knable yeah. with the K. There's a lot of poetry in that. The H in Hoffman is silent, actually. So it's just Hoffman. <laughs> That's how we, we just go with it. Hoffman. Those La Jolla. That's right. La Jolla, where you live. La Jolla, California. Well done. That's a beautiful thing. Um, if you wouldn't mind here, we're getting a lot of questions from fans, and, uh, and uh, I want – I want to go back around the horn again. Charlie, you actually have, as you enjoy your beer float, um, you actually have a number of questions coming in from fans. This one is from John P. And he's asking Charlie Barons, what is your favorite brewer's memory? <clears throat> oh, geez. Oh, okay. I remember this. Um, in two, in when there was the groundbreaking, okay, for the yeah. Miller Park, Okay. Um, yeah, 2001. My <laughs> uncle, my uncle went a deal to the groundbreaking and then brought me back a Miller Park commemorative ball signed by the Bud Selig. So that was pretty wow. uh, gosh darn cool. Still got the ball. Uh, don't make me find it right now, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you've gone very minimalist on your background i appreciate that you got your keeper moving up there um, yeah yeah no trevor, I'm, I'm trying to get the placement in yeah <laughs> trevor wins background of the show for sure council um you're here in wisconsin what is because who is that Corey? is that your daughter ledger again you don't have to shush her can you pick her up? We would love to see. Yeah. Can you please? Come on up here. So we started this entire thing with Ledger announcing to the world that she went number two, number two ski. Right. So Ledger, job Ledger. Yeah. Hey, Daddy's got a pretty good hammer too, you know. <laughs> oh, the phone down. I think the nice. phone's down. Nice. Hi, Ledger. Well done. Oh, it's good to see you, man. You remember when your kids were that young, Craig and Trevor? Wow. Those are good memories. Great memories. All right, Trevor, give me a little take on uh, 
playing with Craig Council, not just observing him from afar, now he's a manager, but I interviewed CC Sabathi a couple of weeks ago and he caught himself before he used profanity on the air, but he goes, I just couldn't believe how red Craig Council got, like, you know, red uh, ass. <laughs> so give me your take on <laughs> Craig Council. What kind of teammate? For me, for me with Counts, he, he was kind of like a great insurance company, F. Hutton. When, when he spoke, people would listen. And I just, like I mentioned earlier, when we were talking about his batting stance, the gene that he has as far as being clutch, it's just it's such a presence, such a professional presence and such a great, loyal teammate that, you know, you gravitate to people like that. You gravitate to people that you trust and the people that you can count on. And it was, you know, we saw the ability in him uh, to manage as a player. And so it was a foregone conclusion. He was going to end up in the dugout for the Brewers. Um, I know baseball's his passion. Milwaukee's his love. And you combine those two things, and you guys are lucky to have him. That's awesome. Uh, I'd like to ask all of you guys, including you, Charlie, is from a performer's perspective, but what's the most nervous you've ever been? What situation were you the most nervous when you're performing your craft? And how did you get through and actually perform uh, that <clears throat> moment. Get, Craig, we'll start with you. What's the most nervous you've ever been in your career? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it was on a baseball field. I would, I would say, you know, the, the times I'm nervous is when I'm speaking in front of a lot of people about a subject that I don't know much about. Uh, <laughs> 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 and with the baseball stuff, it's anything that's not baseball. <laughs> And, and so when you're asked to do that, I, I remember giving a speech last winter um, for, for a great charity, Sharp Literacy, uh, but 600 people out in, the, out in front of you and um, you're sweating bullets uh, because literacy, although you know, it's a great cause, but I just, you know, I've not spent my life devoted to it. And so um, I was sweating bullets that whole day and preparing that and giving it, uh, you know, it, well, you feel like it went off okay, but man, I was so happy when it was done. I thought you were going to say because you're not literate, and <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that's not true at all. How about you, Charlie? Give us a chance. Uh, you know, he, he, he's afraid of speaking in front of public. You do that for a living. Oh, so yeah. give me the most nervous you've been, and how do you push through those moments? Um, well, I'll let the other Charlie uh, do it. Uh, in case you want this Charlie to ask you, I think it might be a different answer for me, though. Um, but I would say I actually, a couple of years ago, I gave a commencement speech for uh, the journalism school yeah. you, and uh, the whole time, like preparing for it, I was like, "Why? I, I can't. How, how did I, the guy who talks like this? How did they uh, find me to do the thing?" So I was like, "Be more serious. Stand-up comedy is like one thing, but doing like something where you have to be more serious and have a point. It, you know, there's more that can. There's less that you can hide behind. So that would probably be." <laughs> You know, we're all <clears throat> going through our, our, our authentic dialects here. Your story, Charlie, is one of the funniest I've ever heard about, because as a broadcaster, when you hear yourself for the first time, you can't believe what you sound like. And I remember yeah. hearing my, my, my tape, my demo tape, for the first time I ever called play-by-play, -play, and I was like, here's a 2-0 pitch. It's high for ball three. Three and one now, the count. And I couldn't believe what a heck I sounded like. But when, when did you first discover, like, you actually might have a Wisconsin accent? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, I, 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 I finished journal, journalism school. I was going to do, like, documentaries and all that stuff there. So I didn't do much broadcasting. Then I went to L.A. and started to, like, okay, maybe I'll get in on this. And I had this professor there who had one of those golden NPR voices. And he was like, from NPR News in Washington, I'm going to judge you. Charlie, let's hear your anchor read. And then I was like, <clears throat> oh, thank you, sir. Uh, in Menasha today, please pull over a man from Aspenon for not stopping at the stop and go light. Please arrest the man having weapons in his bag. <laughs> Uh, and he just looked at me like you just found a fresh hemorrhoid. Oh, the lights are going on and off in here. Uh, you know, it was just did one you, of those. Did you, say, uh, did you say he found a fresh hemorrhoid? Oh, no, that was the look <laughs> on his face. Like he had Whoa. just found, you know, the look on your face, you can find a fresh hemorrhoid. It's like, 
I mean, I'm using my imagination, but I think that's about what it sounds like, you know, or what it, well, what it Tra looks like. Trevor, you're the oldest guy here. What is your fresh hemorrhoid face? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Perfect. That's it. That's it. I better stand up. All right, uh, Trevor. You, Trevor, what, what's the most nervous you've ever been? I'm, and I'm uh, going to keep this onto the baseball field. What's the most nervous, and how'd you push through, man? Hey, no pun intended there. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. I, I love the fact that uh, you know everyone's so humble here. But I, I got to piggyback count on the public speaking aspect. There's nothing fun about that whole thing. And to just give you a little bit of insight into Cooperstown, they recommended you write the whole thing out. And the fact that we were able to practice it as long as we did and get it down to each word, knowing what was coming, it took all the pressure off and really got to enjoy the moment. Um, BA, you're, you're fantastic at what you do, man. There's nothing that, you know, you're becoming worldwide, bro. You're, you're <laughs> the best Thank at you. uh, what you do is, is amazing. And so... I can only imagine, you know, as youngsters in any profession, we, we're not really sure, but uh, you provide a lot of confidence for people out there. But for me, you know, just in baseball-wise, the, the, the ner most nervous portion of a late-inning guy is sitting around in that seventh and eighth, eighth, inning, eighth inning waiting for the door to open or your number to be called. And um, when you have the stuff that I featured, you should be very nervous. If I had Corey's stuff, I think I might have been a little more relaxed than uh, trying to go out there and compete with people. But uh, – it's just the opportunity that you have to try and uh, let some of that nervousness go away and be relaxed. And you guys always seem like you're in such control when you're playing and performing in these huge games, and, you know, World Series, Craig and Trevor, you guys have participated in World Series. Uh, Craig, you've thrived in those moments in the LCS and the World Series, won two rings. How about you, Corey? Your career is just kind of, it got off the rails because of your injury. Now you're coming back. Uh, from your pitching career, uh, what's kind of – give us one of those moments where you just – you had to push through it and you knew it was going to be tough, but you did it and you performed well. Well, I, I mean, I'd like to say, you know, I was never nervous coming in there in the ninth inning, but, um, I mean, Hopkins has been in a lot more safe situations than I have, a lot more. And, uh, yeah, you, you start thinking about it. They're about the sixth or seventh inning. And you get nervous, and I like to just turn those nerves into adrenaline and get going, but um, – uh, I would say the most nervous I've ever been on a baseball diamond um, was my one and only at bat um, when I got it in the, uh, in the National League Championship Series against Alex Wood against the Dodgers, Game Six. And yes, I'll remember it. I'll remember it like it was yesterday, forever. I mean, going up there, crowd goes wild, and coming in, I hear my song, and I'm like, only thing I can think is, don't look like an idiot. And what did you do? <laughs> you struck out swinging, looking like an idiot. So that was – at least I got all the nerves out. That was it. But yeah. Yeah, Your instincts took over. Just just yeah. half. You should have stood there like you had a table leg on. You know, maybe unlike if I would have actually Woodruff swung, Woodyard. though, striking out. Yeah, unlike Woodruff. Yeah. Did you go for the two-flap helmet, or did you go ahead and go legit and uh, the one flap and look like a big leaguer? You know, everything just kind of happened so fast. Um, <laughs> Doesn't even I know. Grabbed, uh, yeah, I, I know council came up and told me, you know, you're up. And I'd already kind of got in my head, uh, I'm probably getting taken out. That's it. You know, I'm coming up. Well, he came up and he's like, all right, Corey, you're hitting. I'm like, the hell do I do? <laughs> Not ready. I go, I go find Arcea's, Arcea's helmet. Hernan is over there trying to find me batting gloves and find a bat for me. I'm trying to walk out and go to the, go to the batter's box. So uh, it was a, uh, it was a mess. I don't know whose helmet gloves bat I used, but I know, I think it was Arcia's bat. And I don't know what flap I had. So that was it. out of body experience for Corey Knabel <laughs> yeah. or in this, in Charlie's case, Corey Nabel. Council, Nabel. Did you ever, did you ever pitch in a game in a big league game? I did not. No pitching for me. No. But you faced a position player, I believe, at one point in your career. I struck out against the position player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Cirillo, Sorry. Jeff Cirillo. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, BA. I appreciate you bringing that up. <laughs> no problem. <laughs>
And Trevor, you, 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 how many at bats you get in the big leagues? You're pretty much a reliever most of your career, but in those early days, didn't you hit a little bit with the Marlins? Yeah, I, I had no idea. I accrued 34 at bats in my career. Um, I had a couple <laughs> hits, which was nice, but uh, I don't remember half of the at bats that I had post being a rookie. So uh, it, it, it's funny, but I'll give you my first big league hit, which was fun. It's uh, I went from the Florida Marlins to Padres about midseason. And I got in that bat against the Marlins when they came into town. And Luis Aquino hung a curveball. I top spin lobbed, went over third base. And I'm going into my old instincts as an infielder, thinking I can stretch this thing out into two because I got Jeff Conine out left field with no arm. I round first base. I did a nice little, you know, bow at first base. I'm going into second. He makes a perfect strike, even though it was a lollipop. I go in head first. I give an arm, take an arm. Brett Barbary's the second baseman, and as he catches it, he says, sorry, off, and knocks my arm off the bag. So I had to go back to the dugout on my first knock. <laughs> oh, the, the real walk of shame. Oh. The real walk of shame. I got hit and ball tricked when I was in college against playing against Texas A&M. I just hit a double off the wall, and I had my chest out. <laughs> I thought I was – I had the elbows pinched back, man. I was a freshman. I was sniffing like, mm-hmm. And the shortstop who I knew, his name was Jason Marshall. He's standing right next to me the whole time. But I was just all, you know, geeked up on myself. I took one step off second base to take my lead. Pitcher wasn't even on the mound, obviously. He was tying his shoes, doing the whole bit. And he just pops a tag on me and goes, sorry, B.A., see ya. Oh, so embarrassing, man. I was like, I need to be a broadcaster. Charlie, when was your last, uh, uh, your, when was your last official at bat as a baseball player? Uh, that would have been uh, fourth grade, I think. I was playing for the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles in uh, AAA, uh, like, you know, fourth grade AAA. Um, and I did, I, I believe I, uh, you know what? No, I was playing for the Marlins and I got beamed and uh, that was it. That We walked, but then we got out and I had to welt on my arm and that's it. That's it. Charlie, <laughs> did, did you, did you cry? Did you cry? <laughs> Internally, a lot. <laughs> when I got home, externally. Yes. Uh, this is awesome. a baseball. I, I would act, this is just off the top of my head. Before we go, we got to wrap it up soon. You guys have been awesome for your time, but I'm kind of like vibing on the whole Wisconsin, authentic Wisconsin thing that Charlie's made a living on and council was surprisingly superb. So can I set a scene for you? And Trevor and I are gonna be your judges here, but the scene is this. Charlie, you're the manager. Corey's the pitcher, Corey Knable, and he's playing himself in this scenario and he's got the bases loaded. And you're gonna come out and try to calm him down. Mm -hmm. Craig is the catcher who's gonna join you at the mound and you two are gonna have a truly Wisconsin conversation about <laughs> what, what's happening with Corey. And it, it's gonna start with, the manager, Charlie, asking the catcher, Craig, what's going on with the pitcher. Trevor, if you wouldn't mind getting us started with an action, I think that would be great. And, and then we'll let everybody go. So if okay. you guys are ready and you can think about where you're at. Corey, you really don't have to do anything but chew gum and look cute like you're doing right Perfect. now. And Good. Uh, <laughs> it, this will be an easy role for you to play. Okay, ready? Go ahead, Trevor. All right. And do we have speed, quiet on the set, and action. Craig, what in the Sam heck is going on out here? Honest to Pete, let's go. We got to have a conversation here, I think. Well, dear, 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 dear Knable, he'll be okay. He's just leaving the ball up a little bit. And, um, you know, he, he'll, be, he'll, he'll be okay. Just leave him in there. Let's go. Yeah, uh, what well, you think he's okay? I mean, he's, there, he's out there, you know, blowing it like Tony did at the uh, at the fish fry the other day. You know, he... I, honest to Pete, I says, don't put perch in until the last line is coming through. It's all the perch in right when the kids are going through. I was like, they don't, they don't appreciate the perch, gosh darn all. And that's what I feel like he's doing right now. So, I mean, you're behind the plate. What do you see? Make a coach. dinner reference. Yeah, yeah, your coach, I think you're right. He went to the fish fry the other day. <laughs> and he got a bad fish. He was, he's been rubbing his stomach on the mound a lot. He might have got a bad piece of fish there. You know, and that's what happens when you don't eat the coleslaw. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Corey, 
Do you have anything to say for yourself? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> all right trevor That's how beautiful. was that that was fantastic i know that I, nobody's thinking about throwing a pitch after that little banter right there it's like, <laughs> hey, let's go back and throw it <laughs> hey a lot of people don't know trevor your your parents were artists like i know your dad was a singer your mom was wasn't she a dancer like a was she a, a ballet dancer or a professional dancer you you come from like an artist background she was a ballerina in a uh you know, they met in a show over in England. She was performing at the Royal Palladium. And uh, honestly, it was a situation that dad was singing in. And it was a good time that uh, they had. And, uh, certainly get our athleticism from mom and some of our drama stuff from dad. That's awesome. All right, we got to go here. Charlie, I'm going to cue you up because I'd love for you to sing us off the air with a little roll out the barrel. So you do what you got to do. And I want to go around the horn and give you guys the last word. Uh, Corey, we'll start with you. Uh, thanks for being here. I know you're getting ready for the season. You're going to be a huge part of whatever season the Brewers are going to have this year. It's so great to have you back from Tommy John surgery. You've been an all-star closer, man. We can't wait to see you on the mound. Really appreciate you being here. What are your uh, final thoughts here as we let you go from the happy hour? Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, it, it was a real honor to be on with these guys. So um, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I can't wait to get things going. So um, being off all, all last year and getting really close in spring training, it was uh, it sucked to see this thing happen. But, <clears throat> I mean, I guess it's kind of a blessing in disguise. So I'll be ready to go once we get, get things rolling, I hope. So thanks again. <clears throat> Great job. Candlesticks make a nice, nice gift, right, Corey? Candlesticks. Yeah, candlesticks make a nice gift. <laughs> You did a good job with that, by the way. Trevor, we'll go to you next, man. You're, uh, you're awesome at, at making everybody feel like they belong and feel good about it. Uh, what, what are your thoughts as we're in the middle of this pandemic and we're trying to figure it all out? But I'd love to hear what you have to say. And again, thank you for being a part of what we do here with the Brewers still, man. You're a legend. Well, certainly thank you for having me. It was an honor for me as well to be a part of the group. And to bounce some things around with Ron was fantastic. And Charlie, you're, you're crazy funny, man. Uh, BA, an amazing job of narrating. But a big shout out to Counts, obviously great to see you. But a big shout out to all those that are, are on the front lines with our healthcare workers. Thank you for all that you do. Um, our chain, uh, food chain that is constantly being stressed, those folks that are out there providing for us all across the country. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. and. Uh, let's just all pull on that same rope and we can get through this together and hope everybody be safe. Thanks for having me. Awesome, Trevor. And that's a fist pump to Charlie, your dad too, who's a doctor over, I think, children's, right? So um, appreciate his efforts, man. That's a beautiful thing. Way to go, Trevor. And uh, Craig, we'll give you the last word before we get to Charlie. He's going to sing us off. Appreciate you being here. You're always willing to do, do whatever we ask. And uh, you're the perfect manager uh, here for the Milwaukee Brewers. And so thanks for helping us entertain today. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, real honor meeting Charlie, putting my Wisconsin accent to a test. I feel like I'm going to go practice right after this show's over. I'm not going to get and go practice more because I got to get up to speed. Man. We got to do a bit. To, you know, we got we got some future here together. I feel like this is my yes. future. Uh, I thought you did pretty good for the record. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. This, this was a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> Hopefully, you know, we can't put baseball on the field right now, but we can have some fun together and hopefully do that today. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Charlie, we're going to give you center stage. If, if you guys can wave and mute your cameras and video, you can leave the meeting. Charlie, we're giving you center stage to sing us off the air. This has been the Brewers Virtual Happy Hour presented by Miller Lite. The uber funny Charlie Barons is going to send us out of here. Take it away. All right, folks, I'm telling you, they asked me to sing, so blame it on the Brewers, okay? Three, two, one, roll out a barrel. We'll have a barrel of fun. Heck yeah, we will. Roll out a barrel. Am I on key? Probably not. We'll have the blues on the run. Zing, zoom, terrero. What's a terrero? I don't know. It don't matter. Bring out the song of good cheer. Cause it's time to roll out the barrel for the gangs all 
here, but da 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 and now you polka and stuff. Folks, I hope this was the best happy hour of your life. As always, Brewers, and you know what the cups. Okay, bye-bye now. Be good. <laughs>